Hello, this is Andy XR from the Deforum Discord server, also known as Function Render Dream when I'm creating music and videos. Hello, and welcome to this super quick tutorial on how to get going with ControlNet within Deforum. As a helper on the server, I've seen quite a few um, big beginners um, asking questions about how to get started with ControlNet. I suspect this comes about from a confusion around things like video input mode, video init, hybrid video, video input paths on control nets. Uh, it can all seem confusing and uh, kind of struggle. I, I definitely struggled when I first started using it, trying to work out which of those settings are needed to influence. Uh, but today is just about uh, getting you started. Um, I'm not going to go into a deep dive about control nets. I do, however, recommend that you check out the control net um, readme in the control net github page which i'll put uh, a link to in the description of this video so we're just going to dive straight in so the end goal is this thing that you're looking at now we're going to create this from a source video and that's the whole point of control net really um, so control nets are a really powerful way of being able to control the diffusion process based on a source image or a source video, as in the final animation that you create um, will take its cues from an input source. Uh, and in this case, the input source is going to be a video. Okay, so this is what we're gonna hopefully try to create. So before we start, Let's look at our source. So the source video I've got is of this gentleman here. It looks like he's being attacked with cash, quite literally a cash attack. Look, shaking his head, no, I'm not happy with that, man. No, just don't stop. Just please, just stop chucking money at me. I've got, I've got plenty, got a nice gold chain, got half a jacket. So we're gonna do some stuff to him, turn him into some sort of a crazy arcane looking cyborg uh, thing. All right, so let's go over to the forum. So this is vanilla, just reloaded the UI completely blank, uh, rather all the default values. Um, if you're not familiar with this, sorry, but you're gonna have to get familiar with it. I'm assuming that you know how to use the basics of the forum. So first things first, our video source is square. So I'm gonna set my width and height to be one to one ratio, 512 by 512 works for me. Order a sampler, default number of steps, uh, tune it to whatever, uh, to whatever your tastes are. Obviously, the more steps you put in here, the longer your your render is going to take. Okay, so we'll keep that there. Um, let's dive straight into it. So keyframes. Now we do not need to use video input mode with control nets. Um, I'm not going to go into uh, when you'd use that for now, but. All we need to know for now is all we want to do is one of the animation modes. So I'm a fan of 3D. I always like to use the 3D animation mode. Don't know why. So we're going to switch it to that. Our cadence I'm going to leave is one because I want to diffuse every single frame uh, of the of the video. I'm going to leave the strength as it is, but we can play with that. Obviously, the higher the strength, then the more impact a previous frame will have on the next frame, in which case it keeps it, it at least to a bit more consistency. I'm going to get rid of this translation Z because I hate the fact it defaults to something I don't want. So we're not going to do any sorts of uh, motion. I'm leaving everything else as it is. Um, uh, classify free guidance scale. I'll leave it. Uh, I normally have eight around 8.2 again it's all down to what you want too high and it gets baked too low and you end up with craziness seed uh, now obviously you have a lot of choice here i i used to start off with itter which is all right um i'm actually a fan of ladder at the moment which kind of walks up and walks down around a central point which i, I really like so you get kind of like more consistent sort of uh renders on 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 a on a set of frames um but again we won't we're not going to go into too much detail there okay so nothing special here i'm going to leave it at 120 frames for now right okay so we need a prompt right so the default prompt that you get with the forum um the prompt changes every every 30 frames um now you could do that right so we can actually uh create an animation which does change uh, based on a uh, frame count but I'm gonna, I've got a prompt which I prepared earlier, so I'm gonna just uh, bring it in for my notepad. Copy that into my buffer, and then highlight the whole thing. 
paste that in. Um, it's got quite a lengthy negative prompt on the end, which I borrowed from Sebastian Kampf. Sebastian Kampf, I think his name is. Um, a YouTuber, so I just got some nice stuff there to make sure that the uh, the anatomy isn't too uh, messed up. And then the main positive part of my prompt, um, I've said here, turn him into a cyborg. Um, it's going to be in the style of arcane, which is a sort of a trigger word for Laura, which I've got installed. Totally not necessary. I've just been playing with it. Your prompt is whatever it is. However, I do recommend that if your source video is of, for example, a person singing or a person dancing, then your prompt should at least kind of loosely relate to that, or rather the prompt should at least uh, indicate the style that you want that, uh, that source video to be transferred over to. Um, so, uh, but you know, I could have left cute, cute bunny in there and it would have it resulted in some pretty interesting results. But for now, I'm just happy as it is. All right. So in it tab, we don't need to do anything here. Um, because we're not using video input mode, um, there's no reason to use the video in it tab. In fact, any of this stuff here. So we can leave this alone. Now this does become relevant when you are using hybrid video, um, but that's for a later time. So ignore that. You do not need that path. You do not, you do not need to put your source video in this init path. So that's a, a good lesson. So we can go straight to the control net. So with the forum, you've got several control net slots available to you that they are all empty for now. Um, and the way that you instigate them is by hitting the enable checkbox. Okay, so um, again, not a deep dive, but I'm gonna just give you uh, some quick pointers as to some pre-processes and models which are worth using, at least when you start getting uh, used to using control nets. So the, um, the key ones that most people use are canny, depth, head, the open post set, and more recently, stuff that we've been playing around with in some of the channels is reference only and tile resample, which is super powerful. Um, but we are just going to play with a couple for now. So Canny, so the Canny preprocessor, um, it's basically uh, a it's a it's a it's a processor which takes each frame or rather an an, an image from the video, uh, and the resulting um, output from this preprocessor is effectively like an outline drawing of what the uh, frame is, and this then guides the diffusion process. So basically the image you get after it's been diffused by stable diffusion uh, will follow the outline that's provided by the Canny preprocessor. Now that preprocessor needs a model, which is full of training, so we need to choose, in this case, the Canny model. So in this case, there is a one-to-one -one relationship. Canny maps to the Canny model. You could, in fact, choose some of the other models, but you're going to end up with some interesting results. So let's try the canny model, or rather, let's use the canny model. The weight is simply the uh, the amount of influence that this control net will have on the process. I'm going to leave it as one. Um, this preprocessor resolution can be a bit confusing. If you don't want to worry about that, just hit the pixel perfect checkbox and it's gone, and control net will work out uh, the resolution that it needs to use. The low and high thresholds you can leave. Uh, if you drop the threshold here, then you'll get more, um, the control net will do more outlining of the of the image that, it, that is being passed to it. Um, but again, let's just leave those alone. This is just getting it done quickly. And then finally, you need to provide the, uh, the path to the source video. So let's go back to our folder with the source video in it. And in this case, I'm on Windows 11, so I can just right click. I can do copy as path, go over here to this entry field and just paste it in. If you're on Windows 10, I think it's shift right click and you can do copy as path. Okay, so this is basically saying what will actually happen is Control Net will, will, uh, will use all of the extracted frames from, uh, from this video and apply the Control Net processor and model to each frame. And then Diffusion then just puts all the frames back together. So this is why I think I've seen quite a lot of people say, oh, I've looked in the Control Net input frames folder in my batch folder, and um, it's not doing anything. All, those, all the images inside that folder are just the same as my video. Well, yes, because those are the frames that are passed to the Control Net. They're not the frames that the Control Net uh, has created. 
All right. So uh, control mode, you can either make it balanced, which means that there's like an equal weighting between the prompt and what control net wants to do. You can uh, put more weighting on your prompt um, or you can uh, make control net more important. I'm going to do for balance for now. Uh, I'm just going to see how that works out. So and then we're going to add one more control net. So we're going to add a second one. And in this case, because we're talking about uh, extracting information from a person's movements or the person's face, there's some great uh, pre-processors in here called Open Pose. And I'm going to use Open Pose Face, which is tuned to people's faces. And it has a model called Open Pose. So even though there are several pre-processors called Open Pose, they all utilize the same one model. So there's a many-to-one relationship there. So there we go. Open pose face maps to open pose. Again, leave the weight as one, so it maximum influence from the control net. And again, we need to paste in that video path because we're saying use the images from this video. If you wanted to be really kind of weird, you could input a different video. Okay, so that video input path is not uh, does not have to be the same. Am I going to make control net more important here? No, not. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. Okay, see, so I'm just going to play. Pixel perfect again, switch that back on, although it doesn't make too much difference with the uh, open pose preprocesses. We're not going to do any hybrid video yet. On the output tab, I'm going to set it to be the same as the input. Um, that's what we have to do there. Yeah, that's cool. And then I always delete my images afterwards because just to save on some space. All right, so we've got everything set up. We've got a square. Um, uh, render, we've got 3D, cadence of one, ladder, seeding, uh, relatively high strength and CFG. We've got a single prompt, nothing in the unit. Contro uh, two control nets set up. You can have up to five. No hybrid, output is set. And we hit the generate button. And what we will do is we will fast forward in time to see what it comes up with. <laughs> Okay, so that's just about finished. Just finished doing the stitching. Let's click here after generation to show the video. Let's see what it's come up with. And there it goes. So notice how there's no money falling out of the sky. I can mind you, there are some things which might indicate that it tried to render this stuff in his hair, maybe the money passing him. But luckily, we've spared him death by dosh, which is good. Okay, so that's that. Really quick and easy example how to get going with control net. There's plenty of things that you can tune and play around with. So I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, an extra piece of bonus material here. Uh, a few of us in the channels have been experimenting with a, an additional model, which is super powerful because it doesn't require anything else. It's just one model, no other control nets, um, some strange values in the keyframes, uh, but the results are pretty impressive. So let's dive straight into that. So let's close this. So. Let's get rid of this, that control net there. Let's turn this control net off as well. Start from, start from scratch. So the one we're going to use is we have no preprocessor. So we don't need control net to look at the image to do anything with it. But instead, we're going to go straight to a model. And that model is called tile. All right. We're going to set the weight to be super strong, which is two, which is a bit weird, but that's cool. Uh, we're going to use the same video input path, the same person, and we're going to say control net is the most important thing. That's it. Nothing else. No more control net set up. For this to work really well, we go over to the keyframes again. It's 3D, nothing changes here. But with the strength, we're going to set it to zero, which effectively means that uh, each frame is going to have no influence on subsequent frames, but the frames are influenced by the inner image, which is passed in from the video. So we're going to set strength to be zero, nothing there. We're going to set our classifier free guidance to be super low, down to three. 
and we can have a fixed seed. Now, typically in animations, particularly in 2D and 3D animations, a fixed seed ends up to this sort of thing called overbaking, where you start to see really strong lines, horribly vibrant colors, and the whole thing ends up being a disgusting mess. Now, that sometimes aesthetically, that's something which you might like, but in this case, um, you're going to see that fixed actually uh, isn't influenced by that. I'm also going to go into the noise. I'm turning off all things to do with noise, set it to zero. I'm going to switch off everything to do with anti-blurring, just set that to zero. I'm not going to play with the coherence. We can leave that lab. In fact, I can, well, yeah, we'll leave that as it is. Um, that'll be fine. Don't have to do anything there. Keep our same prompt. Nothing to do within init. Control net all set up. That's it. So let's click generate on that and let's see how that one works out. And we'll come back to you when it's finished. Okay, the render's done. Let's see what the video looks like. Check it out. Bit of an arcane style going on there because of that Laura. The money, you even got the money. Check that out. Okay. So that was achieved with a single control net. No preprocessor, heavyweight, no strength, really low CFG. Thank you to really big name who kind of ran upon that one as well and uh, others too in the channel. So that's a quick overview of getting control networking within the forum. There's plenty more that you can experiment with. Hybrid video, you can put in some hybrid motion in there, change the, the schedules, bump that up, play around with the cadence. That will speed things up for you too, to a certain level. Obviously, you can direct it, put some more prompts in here, all the normal, amazing, the forum stuff. Okay, that's it for now. Enjoy. If you have any more questions, then obviously use the channel on Discord. Okay, see you later.